It's it's always after the last commercial break. Michigan State's dancing. We're going to talk about it right now. Oh, my God. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. Spartan friends, Spartan family, locked on Spartans listeners. Um, I'm recording this roughly four minutes after Michigan State just heard their name called in selection Sunday, and um, we've got a lot of emotions right now. We've actually... Started off the last few shows with that sentence. Hey, we have a lot of emotions about this. I feel like I'm in my third trimester of a pregnancy right now. Um, Why do they have to do that every single year that Michigan State's on the bubble, like during the last commercial break? Um, I that's that's ten years off the tail end of my life that we're shaved off here. Um, Look, we're gonna get into the matchup really quick. We're gonna go more in depth tomorrow with Dave Klein of Spartans Illustrated. But right now, let's just get all the emotions out of the way, (sighs) guys. Look. I know this is not what we wanted any season. Any season you don't ever want to be at the bubble on Michigan State, right? Okay, let's just get that out of the way. Especially when it's the fourth year in a row of doing this, especially when you enter the year as a top five team, okay? You don't want your BPM to reach 240 over 180 ever on selection Sunday. But we're allowed to feel relief here right now because no this isn't the end all be all celebration we aren't just happy with the 26th straight year in the tournament but let's just take a second to recognize how amazing of a feat that is and if you're watching on youtube if you're a loyal listener you're probably wondering where on earth am i right now i'm at my parents house we're doing a saint patrick's day celebration downstairs and i'm in my childhood bedroom recording right now and there is something to be said about no matter how much life changes right now I got two kids, a wife, a job, this wonderful show, many relationships that I didn't have when I was sleeping in this room. But even back then, when I was knocking my head on that pillow over there, Tom Izzo and the Michigan State Spartans were making the tournament year in and year out. Things change a lot drastically in life, especially these days. Michigan State basketball making March Madness, hearing their name on Selection Sunday for 26 straight years, will not be taken for granted here. Again. Again, and I know there's a faction of state fans that don't want to hear any of this, right? That This is the fourth year in a row. We're doing this where we are having our hairlines scale back so far, you can't even fit it all in the camera. I understand that this is our fourth year in a row of doing this. That's not fun. But at the very least, let's just appreciate this for a second, a second, just one second. Um, because, look, we're, we're fortunate. We are fortunate right now as Michigan State fans. We are playing in the big dance. Yes, they failed the regular season. They didn't get a Big Ten regular season banner. If you're into the Big Ten tournament, no, they didn't get that banner either. There's one banner left or two. The Final Four banner, National Championship banner. In my opinion, you need to win the Final Four or go to the Final Four for this to be a successful season, right? But you can't compete for that if you're not in the tournament. Michigan State is very, very fortunate right now, especially with what happened in college basketball the last 24 to 48 hours. Oregon beating Arizona as 12-point underdogs to eventually win the Pac-12 title. Steal a bid. North Carolina State, five games in five days, beat North Carolina's 10-point underdogs to steal another bid. And then FAU as 12-point favorites against Temple. They lose two. I'm sitting on my couch on Saturday thinking, okay, um, these are a lot of hurricanes going on right now, and they're coming towards us, bubble teams. Because when we put our head on the pillow Thursday night, there's nothing to stress about. But they call it madness for a reason. All right, things got hairy. Things got hairy quick. And you could go ahead and ask St. Joe's how they feel about, you know, how Selection Sunday went. Or Oklahoma, how they feel. Now, I say fortunate. Fortunate. Not undeserving. Because, look, Michigan State, despite being 19 and 14, they did work their way into the field by getting no quarter three or, sorry, not quarter, quad three or quad four losses. Okay, They had the 12th best strength of schedule in the country. They were 24 in the net rankings. 
So it's equal part. Yes, they, they did earn their spot in here as the nine seed. But man, anytime you're 19 and 14 in a season, no matter how bad your schedule is, anytime you can survive probably what is the craziest bubble weekend in at least a generation, if not ever, of the NCAA tournament, excuse me for having a big sigh of relief. I'm going to pour myself a big Guinness after that and take it like a shot here because that's the only thing that's going to regulate my heartbeat. Um, excuse us for just celebrating that. Now let's get into the actual game here a little bit. How do we like the draw? Because last we talked was after the Purdue game. I said, and this is when you know the bubble was still firm, not absolutely crazy. I said a loss maybe helps you against Purdue because you're solidly on that 10 seed line. At worst, you're probably going to get to the 11. That's better than playing the one seed in the second round should you win your first round game. And <laughs> what's that? Oh, that's North Carolina in the second round? But that's something funny that us Michigan State fans do. And maybe other teams do this too when they're hovering around like the seven or the eight or the nine line. Is that we already just start looking to the second round game as if it's a foregone conclusion. As if like the first round is a bye game or we could take any opponent for granted uh, after the year that we've had. So let's talk about the first round opponent. It's going to be Mississippi State, a team that just absolutely kicked the teeth off of Tennessee. And that's a good Tennessee team. All right. So Bart Torrick has Mississippi State number 30 okay, in their rankings. Michigan State. Still in the top 25 uh, per Torvik. Their offensive efficiency is 61st in the nation, but they play some nasty defense, top 20 defense out of the Bulldogs down there at Mississippi State. Now, they do not shoot the three-point well. They shoot it at 32.5%. Guys, me and you, even if you're listening after a hard day of St. Patrick's Day festivities, you could probably do better than 32%. They just don't take a lot of three-pointers. On the contrary, three-point defense they're top five in the country, all right? So as if Jaden Aiken's shooting problems haven't been hard enough to stomach, as if it's been hard enough finding a three-pointer from anywhere on the court lately, Mississippi State is going to make that a little tougher. So Mississippi State, they did skid to end their year. Gee, sound familiar? Sound like another MSU you know? The regular season, they lost their last four games. Now, granted, the last four games they lost were all two tournament teams, but in the SEC tournament, they beat LSU, they beat beat the absolute mm, out of Tennessee and then lost to eventual SEC champion Auburn. So this is a team that does have a good guard, freshman guard, Josh Hubbard. All right. Shoots 35%, but really, really good distributor of the ball. And then this is what I don't like see because by and large, Mississippi State, they're a team that could match up okay with the Spartans because what's Michigan State really good at defensively? It's that wing perimeter or guard defense. So when I see that their second best player, Mr. Tolu Smith, standing at six foot eleven, that doesn't make me all too happy. Now he does shoot sixty one percent from the field, which is like good. It's nothing extraordinary, but we've seen a lot of just average big men really dial it up against Michigan State. So yes, this is going to be a team that is worth you know. <laughs> As if we don't lose sleep over every single game. I mean, Michigan State could be playing uh, Bridgman High School in March Madness and still lose sleep. But if you're a normal, sane person, yeah, this is still probably a game that you're going you know, to uh, somewhat worry about here. Now, North Carolina, the last that we saw of them, if you did watch the game, of course, was their game against uh, North Carolina State. And North Carolina just could not hit a three-pointer for the life of them. And I say that as someone that bet North Carolina plus 10.5. Don't get it twisted. I, I wasn't thrilled to see the Wild or sorry, the Wolfpack win that game, but you know, we, we benefited here. Anyway, North Carolina, despite the one seed, they are number nine, according to Bart Torvik. They have a top 30 offense that ranks 26, and then their defense is just nasty. If you guys have been watching college basketball, their guard, RJ Davis, isn't just the best player in the ACC, maybe the best player in the nation, as far as point guard goes. I know Caleb Love will have something to say about that, but that's one of the best guards that you could possibly see, and Back for his 19th year of college basketball, Armando Baycott, too. So, uh, yes, if, if, if Michigan State gets by Mississippi State here in the first round, it's going to be a tall task to get to the Sweet 16. But then again, I ain't complaining. You're not going to see me moping around about our seat or anything. Heck, they thought you were better than what I thought you were because I didn't really think Michigan State was anything that great. They were 19 and 14 for crying out loud. So, as we end this segment, as I try to get my heart rate back down to baseline, um, to wrap it all up, 
relief. Relief that Michigan State is dancing for two reasons. One, that streak, which I think is very important. Tom Izzo thinks is very important. A lot of State fans, you out there, think it's very important. Oh, boy. Lost my train of thought, which is an unfortunate way to end the segment. But, uh, yeah, the, the number two – no, that's right. The number two reason, you you can't write your runs and try to do something in March if you're just not in the dance in general. So, folks, we're going to talk football here. In a little bit, I know that's a very, very bizarre uh, time to bring up this football. And as I'm watching on YouTube, this sun that's setting over here uh, is shining in my face as hard as possible, as if I didn't look white enough. Anyway, folks, I need to talk your ear off about Nissan. Oh, my God. <laughs> I need a defri uh, defibrillator over here. Uh, this week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. Like the Houston Cougars, for example. They can only be described as an Armada. This top-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder they're expected to land a top seed in the tournament after finishing their first season in the Big 12. Or, hey, the Utah State Aggies are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised us all with powerful performances against, uh, sorry, against New Mexico, giving them their first outright Midwest Mountain West title in program history. I've only had one beer the entire day. I swear I'm not just going hard on St. Patrick's Day. I, I just my, my mind is spinning right now. That's why I can't read right now. <laughs> they say, win life, go rogue, and that's exactly what the Aggies have done here. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada, and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. And I got to go through one more ad read, guys. God bless me. Fire TV. Need to talk your ears off about Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as some free and live TV. Now, whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and colleges conferences too. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more. Keep up to date on all of the latest in the sports world from March Madness, NBA, MLB, and tons more. Not to mention, guys, great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, well, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. All right, let's end things here on some football for three reasons. One, the rest of this week is probably going to be dominated by basketball here, okay? Tomorrow's show, we got Dave Klein of Spartans Illustrated joining us. That's going to be a lot of fun on that show. Reason number two for getting to football, God, it's been too long, and some things have happened between now and the last time we've talked about football. And reason number three, my goodness gracious, what a busy week in East Lansing. Tuesday, spring practice starts. So let's begin there. Spring practice will kick off on Tuesday. They, they will practice Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturdays leading up until the open spring event on April 20th. So we've talked about that. Don't expect a full-on spring game like the good old days back here in East Lansing. What Jonathan Smith did at Oregon State was something that we saw here in the last few years under Mel Tucker is that it's going to be primarily an open practice, maybe a scrimmage aspect at the end. But even last year in Corvallis, Jonathan Smith held some of his star players out of that open spring practice. So I know we're a month away, but again, don't expect like this whole grand spring game on April 20th. Still go. Still support the guys. It'll be worth going to. Hopefully it's good weather. But that's what we got between now and the last spring practice. Now, of course. Storylines, guys. We got to talk storylines. And I got four written in front of me. Number one, what I'll be looking forward to is just how they're going to run things. Because last year, say what you will about the Mel Tucker era, his decision making, I actually thought he made a nice decision last spring in limiting the contact in spring. Now, whether Jonathan Smith will give up that information, whether how hard they're hitting, if they're hitting at all or anything in between. Well, that's going to come during during media availability here in the next few weeks. But I'm a cautious person, okay? I, I like my things in bubble wrap. And that includes Michigan State football players in spring practice because the reason Mel Tucker made that change last spring from the spring prior is because it looked like a battlefield in spring practice in that 2022 offseason. All right, you want to get to summer and fall as healthy as possible. So 
You talk about a storyline with no sex appeal whatsoever. Well, there it is right there. I just want to see how much they'll be hitting, how safe they're going to keep things this spring. Now, number two, and let's start talking about things that most people care about here. Position battles. All right. The number one position battle I'm looking forward to on the offensive side of the ball here isn't receivers, although that, that could be a really good candidate, and we'll explain why here in a little bit. But for me, it's the offensive line. And maybe that's because the last few years the offensive line struggled a little bit. But this is going to be an exciting new change. Coach Maholchek, of course, coming in as one of the most highly regarded offensive line coaches in the nation. So right now, as it stands, I would imagine your two tackles, Brandon Baldwin, Ethan Boyd, and then inside the middle, transfer from Holy Cross, Luke Newman, transfer from Oregon State, Tanner Miller, and then, well, transfer from Michigan State. You got him out of the transfer portal. Gino Vandemark. So that seems pretty set in stone. And God, you, you talk about just niche storylines. I'm fascinated if we get any inkling of who is going to be on the two deep there. Okay, whether it's Christian Phillips, how much is Dallas Fincher pushing? Ashton Lepo, is he going to have anything to say about these tackle positions? So I know it's not the names we hear often during the fall, but we have learned as Michigan State fans, luckily, uh, how important offensive line play is here the last few years. So yeah, uh, apologies for just putting some extra emphasis on that. Now for the defensive side of the ball, storyline number three for me is the defensive end position. I do wonder how things will shake out here. All right, Chris Bogle, you could assume that he might be getting one of these starting roles. Quinn Darius Dunnigan, the transfer from Middle Tennessee State. And you also have experienced guys like Avery Dunn. Ken Talley, this will be his second year in the system. Under Joe Rossi, fascinated to see how he will be used. And it might be hard to see how he's going to be used just in spring practice. But any kind of information we can get out of here is going to be worth registering. And, hey, let's not keep out guys, the young guys, the true sophomores, Jalen Thompson, who ended his year getting some really good productive reps for Michigan State on the defensive line. And then, of course, the two crown jewels of that class last year by Job and Andrew DePape. Whether they're going to be pushing for a starting role, whether they're going to be solidly on that too deep, or hey, even if anything or anyone wants to say anything good about those guys, I mean, those are three guys. Jalen Thompson, by Joe, and Andrew DePape, that a lot of the fan base are very, very interested in. Both because, well, yeah, they were rock stars in their recruiting class, but this is going to be a big position this offseason. All right, we need a lot more production from the defensive end position. Now, the fourth storyline, basic one, obvious one. All eyes on Aiden Childs. Is this a quarterback battle? Absolutely not. Are you, are you crazy? No. No, this isn't a quarterback battle. He is the day one starter, provided he stays injury free during this offseason. But hey, anything that we can get out of spring practice, whether it's a nice little Twitter video where Aiden Childs is about a quarter mile off in the distance slinging the rock, you know, uh, we over here will be eating all of that up. Now, let's get to some news that unfolded a few days ago. TJ Sheffield. It was kind of interesting that when they dropped the rosters that TJ Sheffield was not on there yet. He was going to come here as a graduate transfer, I believe. So you could chalk it up to, all right, well, they're just dotting some I's and crossing some T's. And yeah, he'll still get here. But um, no, he is not coming here. The former Purdue transfer wide receiver announced on Twitter that he will not be attending Michigan State. Now, why is it grades? Is it transferring credits or something that we're not hip to? I, I don't know. Uh, whatever. I, I, we're not going to get too hung up on that. But the five foot 11, 190 pound receiver will not be coming to Michigan State. He was Purdue's second leading receiver last year. And let's not kid ourselves. I'm not going to reverse course and say, oh, guy was a bomb, good riddance. Like, no, no, no. This was a guy that was probably going to compete for that starting wide receiver core, whether it was the second guy or the third guy out of the slot, and also probably a punt and kick returner for your Spartans too. And I just thought he would have been a really good takeover for Tyrell Henry. Of course, sophomore wide receiver that transferred over to Wisconsin. I thought that Sheffield was a more mature version on the field, not off the field, like a more refined version. I think that's a better word, more refined version of Tyrell Henry. So to see him go before even coming here, I guess, is a bit of a bummer. Let's not get it twisted. So now what? Well, okay, now what? Your starting wide receiver trio, let's just imagine they're going to go three wide here, is probably Montori Foster, your leading receiver from last year. Jerron Glover, a guy that you also got out of the transfer portal, who was here at Michigan State. And then my third guess is Antonio Gates Jr. As things stand right now, 
perhaps Nick Marsh. I know it's asking a lot from a true freshman, but this is a guy that I think is incredibly talented. You probably think is incredibly talented. So we'll see if it's going to be that early of playing time for Nick Marsh. But yeah, right now, if I had to bet on it, on Tory Foster, Jerron Glover, Antonio Gates. Also, this is going to impact the spring portal window, I believe. I mean, I, I don't think that's too far-fetched to think because well, yeah, I, I think that this slides wide receiver to a position of need in this portal. And guess what, guys? As Michigan State fans, we learned last year that wide receivers can become available in the in the spring transfer portal window as Keon Coleman said goodbye at basically midnight of that cycle. Great times. Now, I'm not saying we're going to get someone of the caliber of Keon Coleman, but yes, that window does open. I imagine it will be slimmer pickings but probably so closer to the skill set that you would find in a TJ Sheffield than anyone else. And you can make it abundantly clear that, yeah, you can compete for starting snaps right off the bat here in East Lansing. So that's what's next. Keep another eye on that for the spring transfer portal window. I imagine that they'll still attack the defensive secondary, maybe bring in someone on the defensive front, although they did a good job shoring up linebacker. Defensive line they did a great job with. Defensive end, heck, you could always improve there. But, yeah, wide receiver, Slides near the top, if not the absolute top of that list for this next window. Now, last but not least, a few days ago, Michigan State held their pro day. Uh, not five, ten, rather. Ten Michigan State Spartans uh, performed in front of scouts, doing all the combine stuff, because only one guy, uh, Nick Samek, got invited to the NFL combine. So this is a way to impress all sorts of others. I want to bring up... A former Spartan, actually. I'm not going to talk about any of the 10 guys that were at Michigan State last year. We're going to bring up Rocky Lombardi. That's right, because I'm sure you've seen this. Rocky Lombardi, the former quarterback, the slayer of the Wolverines back in 2021. Oh, yeah. He, no, 2020. Whatever. I'm, yeah, 2020. I'm sorry. That's right. The Ricky White year. Uh, he was back in East Lansing. It was cool because he said that Trey Mosley wanted someone to throw him the ball. Every single quarterback on last year's roster is gone. So he phoned up Rocky Lombardi, of course, who transferred to Northern Illinois, and he came up to sling the rock and also try to impress the scouts. Now, afterwards, he was asked, Rocky Lombardi was asked, the turmoil that ensued after you left, because, of course, we all remember he transferred two years ago. This was during the Mel Tucker era. The turmoil that ensued after you left, did that surprise you? Rocky Lombardi's answer was, quote, unquote, no comment. Now, I got to point out, listener Jake, he's the one that brought this to my attention. I completely missed that. But, yeah, two words speak so much of how at least one former player thinks of the last regime. And, sure, maybe it's sour grapes that he maybe got, you know, moved out of the program, encouraged to go in the portal by Mel Tucker. But when asked if he was surprised of everything that happened ever since he left here in East Lansing and he said no comment – because it would have been really easy to put on a fake face and say, like, oh, yeah, no, that was surprising. Whoa. Like, now that that no comment, whew, <laughs> that says a lot when at least one player thought of what was going on here in East Lansing. And um, I don't think he's too far off base with that based on everything we've either heard on the record or have heard well, perhaps off the record. So, folks, that is it. Again, I'll bring this up again tomorrow's show. Dave Klein of Spartan Super talking all things Michigan State basketball. Folks, keep it tuned here. Locked on Spartans. Love you all. Go Green.